the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome into the show. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with you. It's Wednesday, January 4th. We have the whole crew together today. Back with you after a uh, hiatus. We were not, we didn't do any show yesterday, no DFS show yesterday. Obviously, all of our thoughts, uh, prayers, hearts, and minds have been entirely focused on the DeMar Hamlin injury, the response to that, and the continuing uh, you know, situation where it's becoming more and more evident day by day, the reports that we get. This is going to be a long road. Right. Uh, it's a potential recovery for DeMar Hamlin. I think, you know, I speak for all of us when I say absolute unprecedented injury. The situation would just, you know, sobering for all of us. I mean, it was just something that you, you know, I think in the back of my head, and we've had a lot of conversations in the last couple of days now about what transpired on the field. And, you know, in the back of my head, it was always something I feared as a football fan. Um, we we have this show and we talk about fantasy football, um, championship week, player nicknames, ridiculous statements. Like everything about this show is, and I tweeted this, you know, it's it, this show's meant to be kind of a distraction from real life. Mm -hmm. And it's worked really well when that real life hasn't touched our sphere in our world, the NFL world. Um, and we pride ourselves on being that for you, like being able to come in here and say a bunch of ridiculous, stupid, grammatically incorrect things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, <laughs> which seem to be... Some of us are better than others. <laughs> which seem to be a salve, you know, in the midst of uh, of real life. And, and, and we take great pride in that. But when it hits you in the face, at the pinnacle of what you talk about... Um, you know, it's it wasn't possible to come on here yesterday and make a bunch of jokes and talk about the trivial things that are, you know, fantasy football is trivial in comparison to what took place. Yeah, we can't we can't be the distraction from the hardships of real life when the hardships of real life are exactly what what we're dealing with, what we're watching, what we're participating in, and it was you know it's one of those really sobering, tragic events that uh, you know unfortunately and fortunately bring good conversations together uh bring uh you know people together we've seen uh, just an outpouring of unity from nfl from all teams from players from uh, fantasy managers from all walks of i mean even outside the nfl scope wherever you look uh the demar hamlin situation is is there to remind us that there are obviously things that are far more important than football, than playing a game, than playing this game about the game uh, of football uh, that that we play. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, Mike, I don't know if you want to add anything to the equation here. This is not. I think it's really important to me that you know nothing we say about Demar Hamlin needs to be the focus. Demar Hamlin needs to be the focus, like um, his family, his friends. His teammates, uh, his his broader community in the NFL, uh, you know that's the focus. So you know I have been, you know Jason mentioned it with fantasy managers. Like I've been genuinely moved by the the unity behind the focus on the health and well being of Demar Hamlin, as opposed to like, look, the reality of the situation is is this was a consequential week for this game we play. It's consequential for the NFL. It's huge. Um, you had two teams uh, that were playing an extremely important game to their schedule uh, that we do not know how that is going to carry out through the remainder of the season. But to see people, like you said, come together for this young man who's 24 years old, who um, by all accounts is an extremely humble, community-centered, um, 
gentleman that just has made it a focus of him to use his platform for good. It's been rewarding to see that. I I look forward to uh, hopefully him waking up and, and recovering and seeing this outpouring of support. And I hope it sets a precedent for the way we approach the NFL injuries and um, fantasy football, you know, for the future, because, you know, sports betting and, and fantasy, like it just all fell away immediately as it should, as it should. And so we, you know, we wanted to get on here today. We're going to have a show. Um, you know, the, what's in my head is the idea of moving forward and not moving on. So we're going to move forward with some, you know, discussion and conversation about playoff scenarios. I know that there are fantasy players that play in week 18 and, uh, but our hearts are with DeMar Hamlin and will remain there. And yeah. so that's going to be the focus, right? Yeah. yeah and the, it, seeing, um, you know, like you feel so helpless of like, I am, I'm watching this with my son and like, I, I have nothing to do with these people, but we, our family became immediately involved with this and, so you're just, I mean, you're staring at a, at a television screen watching people who are, you know, like, like your job is to somehow talk, your job is to talk about football and you're not trained to be this type of a journalist, <laughs> right? And so it was it just something watching, you know, the, these people, uh, these analysts on ESPN, how they're responding to it. We have... Uh, at this uh, on this show, like personally, like Booger McFarland, right, was on Monday Night Football for a season. It didn't feel like the greatest fit, and there was just a, a lot of like you know fun, kind of at his expense of of like you know, like he had the Booger Mobile. It was just like <laughs> it, was, know, it was it was it was ripe for um <laughs> for, for joke for yeah, jokes for and jokes comedy and, and, and making light of it. And it was the booger mobile. Right. And I mean and he took his demotion in, in stride and just and he stuck with the company and we've talked about it in this office of yeah. like his, watching him react to the situation was incredibly moving of someone who has the experience like knows what he's talking about. We're all just we're we're idiots who so far removed. We've never, we've never played the game admittedly he's been in the trenches with with these guys and it, not a situation like this but seen his his brothers get hurt and just the way that he was able to have this conversation was was moving was insightful and then you went to uh Van Pelt and Ryan Clark and it was like watching these people i mean a situation that you've never expected to you talk about sports you're not expecting to have this come up, and the way that they handled it, with with the grace and the dignity that the the situation deserved, it was just like, I mean, I don't I don't even know where I'm going with this well, conversation, no, I mean, but it's just talking of my experience watching it all unfold, and it was, like I was very grateful to have those people guide me through the the tragedy of like, I mean, I'm just staring at a TV crying, and yeah, no, I mean it's well, no said. one knowing what to do. Yeah, but they brought a, a tremendous amount of humanity mm -hmm. and insight to the situation, and they did it, you know, not because they were trained in how to do it. It was just, it was just being uh, genuine and like being you said, a human. Yeah, I mean, it earned a great deal of respect for Booger yes. that night and the way he responded to that. So many, we're we're in the world and we're part of it in a way of talking head world, right? Yes, <laughs> where like, I mean, there were other voices that you know, you you get out and you have to have a take on everything. You can't just be a person. You have to have a take. And so you saw some people, and I, I, I agree, the coverage was human. Yeah. So, I mean, the situation is human, right? And that is our our game is a game for a game. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, it was it was a it was and is a tough, tough situation to um to deal with. It's been you know, we were we were talking also about the decisions to be made moving forward, mm -hmm. about the schedule, the the amount of people involved. The, the way that, you know, we, we need to kind of transition into what's going to happen with that game, what's going to happen with motivation levels in week 18 and, and what transpires. But, um, and I think I'll just move into that now. Sure. I, I, we don't, you know, 
we can just start talking about that. But there's a lot of implications for what is going to take place uh, in terms of the – and again, this is all extremely secondary. You know that listening to the show. But as we move into this discussion, we look at what the NFL announced. The Bengals-Bills game it will not be resumed this week. Uh, they have not currently, nor do we expect them to make changes for week 18 of the NFL season. Fantasy platforms, uh, the F uh, PPC, is that right? I'm, I'm, or sorry, the NFFC. That's what I meant to hmm. say. You know, they've they've sent out. You know, there's a lot of implications on what t transpired in that game. Do you stick with the stats? Do right. you wait? Sleeper came out and said, uh, "Quote: Given these unprecedented circumstances, we will be scoring Week 17 as is. If the NFL resumes the game at a later time, there will be an option in Commissioner Tools to rerun the results. That will be an option, not a default." So commissioners will have to make a decision within their platform based on what their league wants to do to, you know, if they play this game, which I, it's a possibility. Yeah. Um, if they play this game uh, to retroactively apply points for the resumption, you know, the resumed game. I don't know if resumption is a word, to be honest with you. Yeah, sounds, I don't think that's wrong. a word. No, it definitely sounds wrong. Oh, I thought it <laughs> and to you, right. To you. Yeah, if it sounds wrong to me, it's, um, it's, I mean, I knew what he meant. <laughs> yes. So, so it's the, been resumpted. <laughs> <laughs> yes, resumpted. Um, but yeah, I mean, definitely unprecedented is the right word for this. It's really, really hard when you look at the league's decision about this game. And I think a lot of that needs to be about what these teams want. Because if Buffalo, like, it's going to cost them to not resume this game. Right. And that's not just home field. It's also a bye week. Mm -hmm. Like, they have the potential to have a week off. And so... You know, it's really tough to look at it and say the that it's more fair to not play it because it hurts them and their their team. But I hope the league is talking to them, and it's a lot about those players. And there are situations I and 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 Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong about the implications here. But if Buffalo loses to New England this weekend, they would not need to play that game to have the possibility of a first and, and, and Kansas city wins. I'm saying so if Kansas city wins and Buffalo loses to new England, does that game have any implications no. at all for, for Buffalo? No, they go by win percentage as the next kind of thing. So no. And then if, if, if Baltimore were to lose this weekend, are there any implications of any kind for, for Cincinnati? No, Cincinnati would be the three seed. They would play each other again in the playoffs, which is another so there, there There does seem to be a fluidity here is what I'm saying. There's a possibility that what happens this weekend would determine whether or not this game needs to get played. Uh, I think that's 100% why they have not come out and given their answer because their answer could change. If they were to play this game, if they were to continue on the resumption plan, then that would come after week 18 games. I'm guessing It's a that, word. Yeah. Well, that's why I used it again. <laughs> um, this great word that Jason has brought to the forefront thank, of thank our you, minds. Mike. Thank you, Jason. You are very welcome. Um, anyways, if I may resumption here. <laughs> okay, uh, that, man. Eh, all right, Jason, go on. No, Jason, it's, you're resumping. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I need to resump here. Thank uh, you. Uh, but, you know, that would be played after the Week 18 games, most likely pushing the playoff weeks back a week, keeping the Super Bowl where it is because there's that week break between the Super Bowl usually. Uh, I, You know, obviously how the Kansas City game goes and how the Buffalo game goes this weekend will have an effect on that. I think the most likely outcome right now is that this game will not uh, be played, but that is certainly no guarantee right now. And if that game does not does not resump, then you have a real question for, for fantasy managers in sure. their leagues, all these championship games, assuming you're not playing into week 18 and, and week 17 is your championship, as it should be, then there are two courses of actions. If the game is not played or if the game is played. If the game is not played, which I think is the most likely, like Sleeper said, then it's over. The, the, the scores are in. That's how they are choosing their champion. And um, you know, it's one of those things that is you, you, you deal with this when you put a player in your lineup and, you know, unfortunately situations out of your control, you know, Derek Henry wasn't injured. I couldn't have him because of situations out of my control. And I think in most situations, that's the right approach is this is what ha happened in the game. These are the points that were scored. That's what the NFL is moving forward with on the record books. And if that's the case, uh, then whatever the NFL moves forward with on the record books, that's kind of how it goes. But 
I think it's important to have the humanity in these leagues. And on a league-by-league -league basis, it, it can change. I don't think there is one, like, mandatory right approach. You know, in, in the right. two championships, the, the two main championships I was in, Mike and I had a team and in the league of record, those games we were going into, they were already pretty much settled. There was, right. you know, you're talking f one to 5% chance of the score flipping. Right. And so I think, you know, in our leagues, it hasn't even been a question. It was just like, okay, the, the, the championship's over in a league where it was really close. If it's like a 50, 50, it's going to be a toss up. It's going to be a coin flip. Um, I think that might be a tougher pill to swallow, and that's a league-by-league -league basis where maybe you take a vote and say what you think should happen. I know a lot of leagues, they're the co-champions. I know, was going to say, yeah, you're right. The co-champion, th uh, this just happened in, in the CBS league I play in with great friend of the show, Jamie Eisenberg, sent an email out. You know, this game had players from both teams in the championship on both sides. So it's like, you know, you had no idea how this was going to turn out. Three players on this side, three, you know, two players on this side, co-champions. And, um, you know, you made made some contributions to the uh, DeMar Hamlin um, charity situation, which yes, kind of mind-blowing, really, the, the idea. I mean, that, that's, that's over I, $5 million, that's right? That's I mean, where I was going when I lost my train of thought in the beginning of, like, what, how I there's nothing that we can do but we're but but we're also locked into the situation and and you're like well, well what is this person about what is this person supported and then there was this over six million now yeah so there was a, a GoFundMe a, a toy drive from Demar Hamlin that got uh, that, that got raised up and and elevated to the p more public eye and this thing has just exploded and has been we'll a, get that out on Twitter a treat just like like a <sighs> It's so it's so nice to see humans get together every once in a while and support each other in the same thing. Yeah, the, the the original goal was just twenty five hundred dollars, and what was it at, Andy? Over it's six right million. now at six point two five million dollars. It's incredible with over two hundred almost two that two hundred six thousand people participating, and we'll get that tweeted out in case you wanted to uh, yeah, contribute. The, the Chasing M's Foundation Community Toy Drive. Yeah, so th it's, it's pretty incredible. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think Jason's right. I think every league you can, you can kind of determine the outcome that you want, you know, whether by vote or just by sensibilities and whatever, whatever the case may be, there's, there's not really a wrong way to execute right. the end of that yeah, season. I, I know that there are, you know, there are high stakes leagues and there are underdog tournaments and those things have very, you know, impactful financial implications right. and they have to handle those in the, the way that they see fit and, you know, lean i know all of them are leaning on like terms and conditions that talk about canceled games that talk about um what takes place in that event and so and that that's where i think the hard and fast rule if you look at those big money leagues where money's changing hands the betting markets things like that the, the at the end of the day it's whatever the official rule book has is is what happened yeah and from what i've seen in those there is no there's certainly not going to be any retroactive um application of points based on resuming the game later it's going to be um at least with the uh the national one that i looked at if a game's played in a future week it counts for that future week so it doesn't count for the week that is is has taken place so yeah i mean I, you've never seen it before right i mean we went we went through an entire you know covid season and, and thought we would be dealing with this type of situation a lot from a schedule standpoint we we didn't deal with it that much um so We'll we'll move uh we'll move forward and talk about some of the week eighteen information. I know that there are a lot of you out there in need of guidance, and we're going to look at the motivation of uh, of teams heading into week eighteen. I wouldn't say it's entirely settled. I would say we have a good indication of what teams are going to do, but there are there's definitely room for certain teams to make an adjustment. You know, where, where the coach speak right yeah. now goes from like, certainly we'd like to win the game to rubber meets the road and what's the depth chart look like on Sunday? Yeah, you're talking about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I'll bet. I mean, that that's the one that I'm looking through squinted eyes at the, uh, I do not trust you, Todd Bowles. <laughs> Quote, don't want to <laughs> take our foot off the gas. Yeah, that sounds great. That sounds like you're going to play uh, your starters. But then you look at the betting markets and you go, Wait, Atlanta is a heavy favorite in this game? It is a good thing to look at. 
to kind of understand, maybe weed through it. Yeah, like the way that I look at these games is it's it's risk. It's how uh, it's a level of risk that, like the the Buccaneers, I don't think you're going to know until the games are being played. What well, like if Tom Brady's inactive for the game, that's humongous. But I'm guessing that a lot of these players will be active, and you won't know if you should play play them or not. And you, and the coaches weren't going to tip their hands of if players are going to be in. So this is just laying out which players could see part time and whether or not you're willing to accept that risk for that level of a player. Yeah, and um, you know you also have situations like, uh, like you said, you know Washington's going to play Taylor Heineke now, as but, reported on the fantasy footballers on Monday. Snip, oh. snap, snip, snap. <laughs> Drats, <laughs> 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 my bet. <laughs> but uh, oh, yeah. oh, the Carson, yeah, the Carson wins, wins Matt, Ryan. Matt Ryan. But they also said they're going to play Sam Howell in the game. Yes, so it's best like, quarterback. So it's like, uh, and you don't know how is it a quarter for Heineke and three right. quarters for Howell. Those situations will arise in all of these games. The the teams that are in the you know we kind of categorize these in five levels of motivation. Um, level one is like clinched with little or nothing to gain from playing their players. That would be the Buccaneers. You know they're eight and eight. They've clinched. They've locked the four seed. Uh, you're going to have a home game for the 500 Buccaneers. Uh, the Giants are locked into the sixth seed. They've at least been a little more forthright of, of head coach. Dable has said, we're going to do the best thing for our team. Mm -hmm. So that sounds a lot like when Derrick Henry said, I'm going to do whatever coach says, right. <laughs> which means not playing. Yeah. I, and, and there's been uh, reports from beat writers uh, around the the Giants that say that they expect the Giants to rest their starters. That is my expectation as well. What is ironic about that is that the Philadelphia Eagles winning or losing this game has massive implications on other teams. Uh, and I would and not. It seems like they're going to win the game. Yes, I would not expect the backups of the Giants to beat the Philadelphia Eagles. And so, well, they, which is funny because if you if you t if you take that logic train as another team. And you expect the Eagles to win. Yeah. Why do you play your players for the chance to take the Eagles spot that you probably won't have the opportunity to get? Well, the NFL's done a good job with scheduling and trying to have certain games in the mornings or, you know, flexing games to Saturday so that hopefully the majority of these teams don't know what's happened yet. The Vikings, they are the number three seed. They do not have a shot at the one seed. They can improve to the number two seed with a win plus a San Francisco loss. San Francisco is who are they playing? Um you're talking about the Cardinals? Yeah. Yeah. San Francisco is not going to lose this week. Correct. And you also have comments, and I don't know if they're in our doc, but I mean, I was, I was, Kyle Shanahan has learned from experience that he doesn't sit guys. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to. He, he feels like the implications of that have um, come down upon his head in years past. And they are, if you look at Vegas again, they're like, 12 and a half point favorites in this game. 14 now. Ah, 14. Yeah, and the, the way that I would oh, 24. <laughs> 24 now. The way I, like, Brock Purdy needs snaps. Like, I, it's been an incredible story watching Mr. Irrelevant come in. I think he's ripped off four in a row. Uh, but he needs as much experience as he can get as you go into the playoffs. Christian McCaffrey, we did get a little bit of news that he is dealing with a uh, uh, an ankle sprain, a slight ankle sprain. So he's more questionable to me. Of you're probably not going to have an answer. I, I bet he bet he's active, but that's a, a another risky decision that you're going to have to deal with. Of, <laughs> does Christian McCaffrey get one quarter, and then they put uh, you yeah. know Ty Davis Price and Jordan Mason in there? Yeah, this is this is not a fun week to navigate starts no. and sits. It's a better it's better to have your league concluded and then you sit back and watch the mayhem unfold. Play with some DFS. In, with yeah, it, with yeah. an NFL fandom. Uh, the Giants, like I said, they're locked in. The Vikings, you know, um, they have a situation where Kevin O'Connell, you know, this team has been up and down. They'd like to have um, the opportunity to get things going, but yeah, I don't probably know. probably want some momentum. I don't know what they're going to be doing in this game. Do you have a, a beat on it? No, uh, yeah, I believe that all their starters will start the game, but because there is very little um, in in the, in the seating and who they would specifically play should things change, they technically have, um, you know, they can improve to the number two seed, but that's not going to happen. So right. I, I think you're going to end up with 
a game where it, it starts well and then they rest their starters. That's my prediction. And it just means I hope you're not playing fantasy in week 18, but we're here for you if you are. Yeah. So <laughs> the other category I want to talk about are teams that are fighting for playoff seeding actively and division titles. Um, the Chiefs, you know, they can get the number one seed with a win versus Las Vegas. Uh, the Bills, you know, we talked through that situation. Uh, they can clinch the one seed with a win and a Kansas City loss this week, independent of the of the resumption of that game. Mm. I also like how Jason, through the process of learning that that was a word, replaced the normal word resume mm -hmm. yeah. with a new word resump. Yeah, well, that's if you want to continue, then you resump. Just yeah. shake your resump. Okay. Yeah, huh. I will. <laughs> the Chargers, uh, they have a playoff spot clinched. They'll be the fifth or sixth seed. There is motivation for them to avoid the top three seeds. Huge motivation because you have some really good teams here. Um, I, I don't want to play great teams. I want a, a freebie uh, if I can't get a bye week. And so, yeah, the Chargers are playing – um, a full. Do you want game. to play Jacksonville or Tennessee, or do you want to play the Chiefs, Bills, or Bengals? Hmm, I'll hmm. take the first one, please. I mean, I I think they'd go in the favorite, right? I mean, you're, you're talking about going in a massive road underdog or a potential road favorite, uh, in their first round. So, you know, I think that they could give it a go in this one. Yeah, they are. They're playing against Denver, so you have a, a division. Oh, Denver's going to mess this up for yeah, them. I, mean, I think they might mess it up for them. That That's also another part of the motivation is look at the opponents. And the, uh, Denver, you know, we have the the divisional matchup here, the, wanting to play some spoiler, and can. Yeah, yeah, they can. And, and you know, they got the new coach. They, they've been playing a little bit better. The AFC North, what's the situation there with the Bengals and Ravens? Well, they're, they're playing uh, basically for the division. So who wins that game is going to – uh, win the division. Very important. I, th I expect uh, full full steam ahead for both parties. NFC, number one seed. Eagles can clinch it with a win or a Dallas and San Francisco loss. Cowboys, they need to uh, win, have the Philadelphia Eagles loss and uh, lose and the 49ers lose. 49ers, uh, divisions clinched, can get a number one seed with a win and a Philly loss. So uh, we but expect the Eagles to be pushing hard. Yeah. And uh, that's good for your fantasy team, but that game could also get put away. Uh, yeah, and was, then you sit people. I was going to say the, the, they Jacksonville need, style. They need this win for sure. But you know, Jalen Hurts. Oh, great! We expect to have him back. If they're playing against the backups for the Giants, yeah, the second half of this game it could be twenty-four to nothing, and you see the backups completely in there. I mean, um, it it's important and should be too easy. I'm I'm playing. My Eagles, like I, I completely understand that that is a risk, but if they've put the game away, then they put the game. They away. put the game away with points and fantasy points, and you're just you're hoping that it was your player. Yep. that came through with the ETN, touch. not Lawrence. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Jacksonville last week is the best comp imaginable. Yes. I mean, if you had any of the running backs, you were super happy. Any of the passing game, you were super upset. But they they smoked them, and I expect the same thing here. Speaking of Jacksonville, they face Tennessee. This this is it. This is why we didn't have Derrick Henry in the championship round. Winner takes the South. That is a full motivation game. <laughs> uh, play all of those players. I know Jacksonville's uh, favored in this one. Is it three or four points? <clears throat> Let me look it up. Yeah. Also, in addition, um, both Zay Jones and Christian Kirk have very achievable and it, it's really great the way their contracts are structured. Six and the, a half. They the have incentives that is big money bonuses for these receivers if they hit them they're close to some and then there's like a stretch goal bnbs you know, you got, what, what? got some bnbs in there they got some bnbs in there and but so they big can money bonus they can hit oh, these big money bonuses my, mike could not put those together they well, i was hearing b and b oh no and i was trying to figure out business <laughs> not business right so um I, you know you beat the tennessee titans by throwing the ball around and these players in the final week obviously their goal is to win the game that's goal one but they know what you know Mar if they're one reception away from hitting a, a hundred and fifty thousand or a, in some cases a five hundred thousand dollar bonus you know that they know that player yes and player players know this oh yeah and players support their teammates and their brothers of trying to get that bag what for do you call 
a a big money bonus that is achieved through the passing game? Uh, I don't know. An Airbnb. Oh, oh there it is. Oh, there it is. Oh. We're, we're oh, back. wait, you're going with the rim shot? Well, that was just a perfect, like, classic <laughs> no, joke. No, that's a rim shot joke, yeah. That, that was that was a, a set-up, punchline, mm-hmm. rim mm-hmm. shot joke. Exactly. Yeah, yeah no, I, I appreciate it. Uh, the number seven seed. Oh, boy. They're, they're <laughs> I don't even know if I want to read through all of this. Patriots, they have to win at Buffalo, or Miami loses and Pittsburgh loses. So, win and you're in for the Patriots. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Dolphins, you got to win mm-hmm. versus the Jets and have New England lose. The Steelers, you got to win versus Cleveland and have Miami lose and New England lose. The Steelers can make the playoffs. Yeah, yeah the baby. Steelers can make the playoffs. Yeah. And, and what's crazy <laughs> With that about Nazi that. that touchdown right at the very end. What's absolutely. Go Tomlin. What's absolutely crazy oh, they'll make about it, And that then they'll eliminate Baltimore. <laughs> just, is, just get ready. <laughs> is the, even though you need three things to happen, it is not outlandish for the. Like, this is. This isn't like you they're going to beat see how. Cleveland. We all know they're going to beat Cleveland. So right? if they beat Cleveland, you've got Miami that needs to lose, and they're on their third string quarterback. Yeah, I think they're losing to the Jets for sure. And then you've got um, New England, who's playing uh, Buffalo. Buffalo. So th- this could really happen for the Steelers to oh, sneak I, in here. I, I'm all for it. <clears throat> I'm always pro Tomlin. So I'm, yeah, and I'm, I'm pro underdog Steelers. Just don't give me the like top of the league Steelers. Oh, we won't for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Jacksonville. Uh, they could technically still get in if they lose, but they need a lot of stuff to go right. So all, all of the these, earlier teams have to lose uh, along with them, and then they'd make it. Basically, all these eight and eight AFC teams have full motivation. Start every player in those games. If you're playing DFS, those are important uh, matchups. And then the last one's the number seven seed in the NFC. Which look, I wish, I really wish the Packers Lions game was a win and in. For both teams? For both teams, because it is for the Packers. It is. The st- which is wild. Like, if the Packers and Steelers just both get in, it, you just look at those teams and you say they just find a way. And the, the NFL is usually so good with the the scheduling for mm-hmm. the final week of the season for all of these things so that teams, they can scoreboard watch while they're playing, but they don't know for sure going into the game. Unfortunately, this is their one mistake. The, the Seattle Seahawks play in the morning against the Rams. And if they win, then Detroit is eliminated. Now yeah. I don't expect I don't expect Detroit to sit their guys against the Packers. They're gonna try their hardest. Like with Dan High T Campbell up there, they're gonna go all out to try and knock the Green Bay Packers out. This but, becomes, but they will know. And and it would be a winning season for the Lions too. That's a, that says a lot to go to nine and eight. I think they'll have full motivation no matter what. Um, f- from a standpoint of being able to play players, you're talking about keeping the divisional dominator over the last decade, uh, sending them home with a loss, sending them out of the playoffs. This becomes. If you're the Lions, yeah, your Super playoff Bowl. game, yeah, yes. this becomes your Super Bowl. So the only thing that stinks about it is like I really want to watch the Sunday night football game, rooting for the Lions to get in the playoffs because I just think that would be cool. Well, and I think the there's Ram- a chance that we might have that wrong. Yeah, because Seattle has the driver's seat there. If the um, if the Lions win and Seattle wins, they're in, not the Lions. Correct. So um, Seattle will be playing the Rams, and I'm. You know, you, you, I'm not saying that that game is a, a shoe in for either side. So, uh, we we will have a very exciting weekend. Also, there is a phenomenal write up on everything we just talked about. Yes, a week 18 playoff motivation and incentives article for Matthew Betts. It lays this out v- much more clearly than we just did. So, <laughs> yeah. take a look at that if you have questions. If you want to resump this discussion, you can go over there. <laughs> well said. And look at that. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to talk a little dynasty. All right. Well, we thought it might be very interesting uh, for this final segment here to the season. Yeah, to talk a little bit of, I guess I'd call it like a first look at decisions to be made in dynasty leagues. Tough decisions. Very tough decisions. I'm not sure these guys, after they saw the questions that are put into the show doc today, want to do the segment anymore. Look, would you rather play fast pitch baseball Mm. or t ball? Cool. Give me T-ball, baby. Jason would take T-ball 100 <laughs> out of 100. Well, uh, am, I the, uh, am I the batter or the pitcher in this situation? 
Uh, I do. Yeah. Is there, I a, mean, is there a pitcher in T-ball? Nope. No, there's not. I mean, there's a guy that sets it on yeah. the tee. Yeah, I'll be that guy. <laughs> Perfect game. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but we're, we're going to call it Rider Dynasty. Ride or Die, presented by Chevrolet. All right, this is the final segment of the year, and while I wouldn't say we are directly competing with one another on a record basis, it you know we're stats oriented fellas. Yeah, yeah we might as well look. Yeah, we might as well look back and see what uh, the final tally was. Uh, and on the year, Mike missed one of the segments, so he went 24 for 48, 50 50. 50 50. If I could change anything, even I, Stevens, I would do fewer heart picks. Mm. That That's why I say we aren't really there for <laughs> record because sometimes we deviated to be different than the other people. Probably for the glory, though. Um, well, well, and you're just like, <laughs> you, you want certain things to happen, so you feel like, well, I'm going with the Oprah, I'm just going to. I'm yes. gonna, I'm gonna think, manifest it. Yeah, I'm gonna manifest it. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm gonna use the secret. Yeah. I'm gonna put it out into the universe. That was written about fantasy football, right? Yeah, that right. That book. Turn, turns out doesn't it's, always it's, work. It works about <laughs> half the time. <laughs> well, it's about fifty percent. Yeah. Yeah. Unlike no <laughs> unlike a coin flip. Yeah. No, I and I was so much better than Mike. Yeah. Uh, twenty six for fifty one, that was fifty one percent. And Jason was fifty six point nine percent. The nice. king, king he got of the under over here. More picks. Yeah, you just doubt people. Well, you and know, you win when you doubt. Pessimism pays off. <laughs> but uh, we're going to do a little Dynasty edition. Ask you ask you guys which player in Dynasty Leagues you'd rather ride with. Okay? <laughs> this first one. Do you want to ride with Trevor Lawrence or Justin Herbert? Oh, man. Lawrence is a year younger. <laughs> I don't find that hard. Really? No. Uh, so then I think should I know Should I find answer. it hard? No, I, I don't think I don't think you should. I, I do believe that the average person would find it hard uh because saying i'm average i i'm saying that when you hear the name justin herbert and you remember last year's quarterback too throwing for you know he uh, had a combined 40 some odd touchdowns and was unbelievable he's young he's the future and you feel much more confident and safe because you've got three years of him being good and he's, I mean, this is a year age gap. This is not an age gap where I think in Dynasty you should be saying, well, I, I get one more youthful season. I, I think a lot of people would say it's easily Justin Herbert. I'm on the other side. Personally, um, I would be riding with Trevor Lawrence. Uh, if I look at where the arrows are pointing, I mean, this season, Trevor Lawrence beat Justin Herbert. He was a better fantasy option all year. And if you look at the weapons, Keenan Allen's getting older. I don't know that they've got, you know, anything in place to make me believe. I don't think Jordan Palmer is going to be a future superstar. Uh, you know, he is what he is. He's a he's a, a, a good, solid NFL wide receiver who can slot in with injuries ahead of him. But to me, Trevor Lawrence, he showed out this year, which felt like his real rookie year since the Urban Meyer it's experience. Josh, Josh Palmer, right? Yeah, what did I say? Jordan? Jordan Palmer is the QB coach, the... Well, there you go. There you go. Jo I, Joshua I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm at the age now where I was not sure if I forgot that his name was actually Jordan Palmer. Well, the good news is Jordan Palmer, not I had an to elite do a wide receiver either. Right. I had to do a, demen Nothing a dementia check on my side. <laughs> I had to. Sorry, Jason. That was not that important. Yeah, so uh, you've got better weapons uh, You know, with Zay Jones and Christian Kirk. And? Yeah, exactly. Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley, do they traded know? for him. You want to do a little Calvin Ridley trivia sure. while we talk about this situation? Sure. Do you know he's the exact same age as Amari Cooper? Did you know that? Yeah, I, Calvin Ridley was an elder statesman when and, he was drafted. And Amari Cooper was drafted at 12 years old. Yeah. <laughs> he's been they, here forever. They're the exact same age, went to the exact same school, and never played it down together. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, that's wild. Cal Calvin Ridley ended up uh, ineligible to play high school football. What? For the final half of his season. Because he was too age, old? Age. Yeah, he was, he was a 20-year-old senior. And so they had an age restriction at 19 years and nine months, and they didn't let him play once he hit that age. Wow. Sure. But uh, kind of wild, though, because you don't think of Ridley. I mean, I, I certainly in the dynasty landscape, 
I think I would view him as younger than 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 Amari Cooper, but he's not. Yeah, so he's played half the season. There's a lot of there's a lot of question marks. The way I look at that situation is, um, Justin Herbert has reached levels of playing quarterback that Trevor Lawrence hasn't approached, and so in that regard, like you know, who do I think can throw for five thousand yards? It's Justin Herbert. You know, who do I think can put up a, a, a quarterback one year? It's Justin Herbert. I don't want to take anything away from Trevor Lawrence's season and the and the possibilities. I don't think I'm guaranteed to be right. I think that there's Oh, so you are on the Herbert side. I am on the Herbert side. Yeah, and I don't I don't think there is a guarantee that Herbert's the better long-term player. I don't think that's a lock, but I think it's a heavy favorite and I think we've seen levels of play from him that are beyond anything we've seen from Trevor Lawrence. Oh, we certainly have. Um so that you know, it's a tough one. It, it, it's it's a little it's a little difficult if you are you know, th there's decisions that are made in Dynasty all the time that seem obvious and easy and are the wrong ones. So this is one where you could be, if you're in Jason's, let's let's put it to practical implications for your league. If you're in Jason's court, where you believe in the future, the arrows, the weapons, whatever you want to say, um, you're in a position that you could take advantage of this situation quite a bit. You could go trade, trading Justin Herbert, for Trevor Lawrence and picks is mm -hmm. an easy thing to do. Yes, right? that's exactly the way that you do it. it. You you get Trevor Lawrence plus. Andy, you do this all the time where you see a slightly younger version of an up-and-coming player and you have a superstar and you trade him for that player plus picks or plus another um, asset on the roster. That's that's the way to approach it for sure. So Which I'm side on are you the, on, Mike? Yeah. So I still lean the Justin Herbert side, but this is – I think the, the other part of the equation here is the coaching staff of Doug Peterson came in, took Trevor Lawrence in that rookie year that we, it, everything you watched on film was, this is a this is going to be a bust of a pick, a just an absolute catastrophic 101. And you're like, oh, no, there's there's the quarterback that the NFL thought was the, the best prospect since Andrew Luck. You're like, ah, I see it. Uh, the fact that Trevor Lawrence is willing to run a little bit more is also, you know, a, a point for Trevor Lawrence. Meanwhile, so uh, and the success that they have had, Doug Peterson has had, you know, offensive success throughout his career it was, of course, let go by the Eagles because nothing's guaranteed in the NFL. But look at Brandon Staley. There was a point in this season where it seemed like if Brandon Staley, I don't remember which week it was, but it was going into a week, had he lost a particular game. I think against the Raiders, if I'm not mistaken. But was, there was a game where there was a groundswell of, of rumors growing. If the Chargers lose this game, Brandon Staley's getting fired. Yeah, and they could be in the Peyton sweepstakes, and, that type of thing. And now, yes, they're you know they're going to make the playoffs, but that hot seat, if the, if the Chargers make a run, he'll be much safer. But if they go one and done in these playoffs and they head into next year and they're just another kind of 500 franchise, Brandon Staley's job is going to be in danger, and then you have, well, now what do who do they bring in? There, so there's, I think there's other aspects of Justin Herbert's career that aren't in necessarily his control that factor in to his fantasy success. It, it's hard, you know, if if Trevor Lawrence is playing for a more stable organization with a better history, I think it would be easier for me to project that. You know, I don't want it to be lost on people that Justin Herbert threw for 5,000 yards last year, that he had right. he had the rushing line that Trevor Lawrence had this year, his rookie year. He almost had it last year. You know, he had the injury that he played through this season. Sure. Um, touchdown variance, you know, we've seen it quite a bit at the quarterback position as well. So uh, it is a judgment call. It is a, it's a gamble. And uh, hopefully, in some ways, both sides are right. You know, for the the landscape and fantasy for Dynasty Leagues, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think you're going to be unhappy with Justin Herbert's future. I think there's a chance you could be unhappy with Trevor Lawrence, but uh, that's the, way, a good point. the way that I project the future, I think you're going to be happy with both players. I believe Trevor Lawrence steps it up and is better next year than he was this year, and he's pretty darn good this year. Let's do one more here. Who do you want to ride with more in a dynasty format? Najee Harris at 24.8 <laughs> years old or Javante Williams at 22.7? <laughs> mm. I, I like – I'm actually – I like the fact that you're both laboring because I didn't think you would. When I read this one, I thought I would get the instantaneous, at least from Jason's I don't even side, know which player. I thought you would instantly say Javante because um, – Two think, years younger. I think as fantasy players, we 
we like what we haven't seen. And I say that because we we, we do know what Javante is talent-wise. He's got the injuries coming back off of it, but we haven't seen the season, right? We have not had a Javante Williams, bell cow opportunity season. And the fact that that mystery exists in the in the world of the unknowns versus the greatest known of all, which is Najee Harris. Like, we've seen Najee Harris through and through. We've seen him too much. Like, they gave him too many carries. I thought you'd say Javante instantaneously, but has the second half of Javante kind of um, endeared him to you in a dynasty? I mean, way? Najee. I'm sorry, yeah, Najee, yes. This uh, So, I, I've always loved Najee. I think he's a really talented player. Loved him coming out of college. Obviously disappointed with... Um, the first half of the season, and I do think that part of that was the foot. I'm obviously disappointed in the offense. I don't know if Kenny Pickett can really get this offense to a place where Najee is a star. You know, Najee's rookie season was the running back four. Can can he get back there, or is that going to be the best season Najee Harris ever has? The real, you know, when I look when I look at these players, I am scared of the Javante Williams situation. I love the talent, and I love the age. But his injury is significant. He is coming back to an offense that was putrid. They fired their coach. They're going to get a new offensive guy in there. But if it's a Russell Wilson problem, then that's going to hurt Javante Williams. And if he comes back the way that J.K. Dobbins come, come, came back, which is kind of the comp we have for his specific injury, you know, nobody nobody views – J.K. Dobbins was a lost year this year. Like, you could use him for a couple of weeks right. uh, towards the end of the season here. But for the most part, J.K. Dobbins was a worthless pick and did not – was irrelevant for fantasy managers throughout this season. If that's what you get next year from Javante, and then you're hoping that two years from now he can get to a place where he's never been yet before in his yep. career, yeah. there are way too many question marks – for me to take Javante over Najee. And th I want to be clear, too. This is not – like, we love Javante, but this is a, a, what, early second round pick. This was not the fourth overall pick. This was not Saquon Barkley. This was not Ezekiel Elliott. This was not Christian McCaffrey. This was not a player that, that is guaranteed to have 100% of the workload forever for your roster. And you've seen that before, like Jason said. I think the, the J.K. Dobbins – like, if I'm, if I'm asking you Najee Harris or J.K. Dobbins, what are you doing? In a dynasty format, I would take Najee still. I'd go Najee. See, I would too. And so, if 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 J.K. Dobbins is an outcome for Javante Williams, you are certainly taking more risk in hopes of more reward on the Javante side. And by the way, can I just say, I'm really enjoying these conversations. <laughs> like oh, like love the them. dynasty kind yeah. of speculative uh, discussions are really fun. So hopefully, Javante comes back. You know, he will not have Melvin Gordon to compete with. The team's going to go through some things. I mean, you talk about a team with question marks. We don't like Najee because he's got Kenny Pickett. Does Javante have Kenny Pickett? And we don't know it. <sighs> right. Does Javante have a new head coach that we, you know, you're you're so far removed from the the guy that you, you know, that drafted you? There are some really big Javante question marks, and that could be, you know, if you – slide that card full of question marks across the table to the manager in your league with Javante, you may be able to, you know, make a transaction that is, that is valuable for you to, to buy into that upside. But yeah, J Javante scares me to death. Javante has a wide range of opinions. Uh, there are managers out there that would give up a ton to get Javante. And there are managers out there that would give Javante away for, probably cheap because they're worried about the future there he's not a one prescription for all leagues type of asset so if you want to kick the tires on acquiring them great if you want to uh kick the tires on selling uh you know for, if you could go get Najee Harris plus something because you've got a younger asset wait until later in, here's here's what we know <clears throat> Javante is going to be ahead of schedule okay his <laughs> right his yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. injury recovery is going to go great He'll be ahead of schedule. He should be ready to go week one. That We know that that report will come out I at wanna, some point. I want to believe that there is a little office somewhere 
and it's it's called the schedule office. <laughs> And there's about an there's an 82 year old man that works there, mm-hmm. and they go in and they they go in and his name's Herb by the way, mm-hmm. and they go in and they say Herb we gotta we gotta change the schedule. I mean everybody's had this schedule. This schedule's from 1954, Herb. But he only has one stamp, and that stamp that he's got a little red ink blot. It just says ahead of schedule. The and red so, tape is thick over there, the guys. Only the only thing bureauc- the bureaucracy is just out of control. You can't get this guy a new. You stamp. can't change the schedule. No, no, it's ahead. So when that report comes <laughs> out that he's ahead of schedule and Come on, Herb. looks good, that's going to be both the time that it's difficult to trade away Javante because you're going right. to go, ooh, he he's, looks ahead of <laughs> he's ahead of schedule. But we're talking about this now. It's going to come, and that's where people will pay up a lot. So maybe you get Najee plus – a future pick because man, Najee's getting older and Javante's two years younger. That's the way I would approach it. There's too many question marks with Javante for me to take the the upside over the known okay. uh, ability of Najee. And, yeah, uh, and Najee, it might depend on the rest of your roster too when you sure. when you make that choice. Say and Najee, he feels you know dynasty wise you're like wow that's this is this about to get his AARP card. He's not 25 yet, so we still have. A couple more years of Najee Harris playing at a high level. He's with Mike Tomlin, so the opportunities will continue to be there. The fact that we had the second half of this year, and you, uh, there was the reports of he stopped playing with the with the steel plate in in his shoe, and all of a sudden Najee Harris, you go, oh yeah, there's Najee Harris. I we remember him. So it feels- it's a, an absolute blessing for fantasy purposes and dynasty because look, I have. I have a, a, a Najee, and like I had the 101 back at, at that time, and it's like heading into this season, it felt like an absolute disaster. I blew the 101. I got my one year from Najee Harris, and now he's just uh, he's back into the pumpkin. Najee. The, the, the clock has struck. But it's like, no, Najee Harris is, is good. He may never be Saquon elite because that's not the type of athlete he is, but he's a tough dude. He's going to grind it out. He's going to play through some injuries, maybe that he shouldn't play through, but you'll get tons of opportunities, and this team is getting better. And you assume that next year, even if Kenny Pickett doesn't get their offense to some great place where you're just like, oh, I want all the options of the Steelers, it should be better, not worse, as Kenny Pickett goes into the next season. And the second half of this season, like you just talked about, where he was better after their bye week, from that point on, Najee Harris was the running back seven. That's pretty good. He may end up in that category of productive, never pretty for his career. And we may have to accept that, but that might be valuable. That might be something where he's, he's RB two high RB two for the rest of his, his career. And that's uh, valuable. Cedric Benson. Sure. Oh man. Clinton Portis, late career. Just give me so much volume. Yeah. I mean, there, there is something to be said about durability and, um, and an amount of opportunity. Availability so, is an ability yeah. in the NFL. Yeah, that's what Herb said. Yep. Uh, that was <laughs> Ride or Die presented by Chevy Silverado. Learn more about Chevy Silverado at Chevy.com. Doing a little Ride or Dynasty today as we turn towards the future. And a um, couple other things to note. I mean, we will, <clears throat> you know, we'll we'll take care of the 4.9% over the next couple days. We'll go through these matchups uh, probably – rather quickly but we'll we'll lay it out for you if you're making decisions this week and um you know the dynasty pass speaking of dynasty that's going to go live on super bowl sunday for those of you that are new with us or 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 need the reminder we have the the ultimate draft kit for next year that will we'll start to get into that season and there's a lot of shows after the year uh we'll be two shows a week starting next week so we'll be here thursday friday this week and then we'll be two shows a week starting uh next week those will come out on tuesday and thursday we'll have an extra episode for the foot clan every week so you can get access to that at jointhefoot.com uh yeah we'll get the boom boom kicker conclusion tomorrow oh my gosh (laughs) boom the final chapter yeah i mean this one i think you jumped the shark you think i already have or you think i will no i think you already did literally (laughs) I did literally. I think you jump literally the jumped yeah. the shark. Um, no, so that's coming tomorrow, and uh, I think that's it. Do you guys have anything else to touch on? That's going to do it. So hopefully, we continue to hear positive uh, reports. We are not medical experts, and nor would I ever find it responsible to make any presumptions about the health of uh, Demar Hamlin. But we, you know, we're certainly 
hoping and praying that things take a positive turn. We've heard from his family in recent days, and so we will continue to stand by in prayer, in thought, uh, and in support of this situation along with you, the Foot Clan, the community, and uh, we'll move forward. So thank you for tuning in and listening to the show. Appreciate y'all, and we'll catch you tomorrow. Stay safe out there, everybody. Have a good one. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.